we want to solve the equation 1.2 cosine x equals sine 2x, and we're asked to find the two smallest positive solutions, and we're asked to enter the answers in radians, run it to three decimal places if needed. So notice how we have a cosine x on the left and a sine 2x on the right. We'll begin by performing a substitution for sine 2x using a double angle identity, where sine 2a equals two times sine a cosine a, so in our case, sine 2x will be equal to two sine x times cosine x. So again, we have 1.2 cosine x equals two sine x times cosine x. Notice how both terms contain a factor of cosine x, so we'll set this equal to zero and factor. So let's go ahead and subtract 1.2 cosine x from both sides, which would give us zero equals two sine x cosine x minus 1.2 cosine x. Again, notice how both terms contain a factor of cosine x, so now we'll factor out cosine x, which would give us zero equals cosine x times the quantity two sine x minus 1.2. Now that it's in factored form, if this product is equal to zero, then either the first factor cosine x equals zero or the second factor two sine x minus 1.2 equals zero. Well notice how this is already solved for cosine x, so let's go ahead and solve this equation for sine x. So we would add 1.2 to both sides and then divide by two, which would give us sine x equals positive 1.2 divided by two. So looking back at the equation cosine x equals zero, we should recognize which positive angles would give us a cosine function value of zero, but for a quick review, Looking at the graph of y equals cosine theta on the coordinate plane, notice how the cosine function value is zero at pi over two radians and three pi over two radians. Also, on the unit circle, notice how the x-coordinate is zero at pi over two radians and three pi over two radians, where on the unit circle, x equals cosine theta. So let's go ahead and record those two positive angles as two possible solutions. Of course, they are solutions, but we're only asked to give the two smallest positive solutions, so we'll have to compare these solutions to the solutions we obtain from the second equation. So looking at sine x equals 1.2 divided by two, we probably recognize that we're not gonna find sine function values equal to this quotient on the unit circle or using reference triangles, which means we'll have to use the calculator to get our decimal approximation for x. So if sine x equals 1.2 divided by two, and we take the inverse sine or arc sine on both sides of the equation, this would give us x equals arc sine or inverse sine of 1.2 divided by two. And now we'll go to the calculator. We first want to verify we're in radian mode, so we'll press the mode key. Notice how we are in radian mode. We'll go back to the home screen by pressing second mode, and now I'll press second sine for arc sine or inverse sine, and then 1.2 divided by two, close parenthesis, enter. So one possible solution would be approximately 0.644 radians. Let's go ahead and write that down. Let's also find the next positive solution to sine x equals 1.2 divided by two. Let's begin by plotting this angle on the coordinate plane. So 0.644 radians would be in the first quadrant. Let's just say it's here. But notice how sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. So the angle that has a reference angle of 0.644 radians in the second quadrant would also have the same sine function value. So the terminal side might look something like this, 
again where this reference angle is 0 0.644 radians. So if the angle terminates here, and we want to find the next positive solution, the initial side would be here, the terminal side would be here, this angle would be pi radians minus this reference angle, or have a rotation minus this reference angle, which would be pi minus 0 0.644. Let's find this value on the graphing calculator. To be more accurate though, instead of entering 0 0.644, remember this was equal to inverse sine of 1.2 divided by two. So let's enter pi minus inverse sine 1.2 divided by two for better accuracy. So notice how this angle would be approximately 2.498 radians. So another solution would be, again, approximately 2.498 radians. Now remember, we're asked to find the two smallest positive solutions. So let's convert pi over two and three pi over two to decimal form so we can easily identify the two smallest positive solutions. Pi divided by two, which you might recognize in decimal form, is approximately 1.571 and 3 pi divided by 2 is approximately 4.712. Which means the two smallest positive solutions would be approximately 0 0.644 and 1.571, where the exact value would be pi over two radians. So again, the two solutions we're looking for are x is approximately 0 0.644 radians and x is equal to pi over two radians. And before we go, let's check this graphically. To check it graphically, if we focus on this form of our equation, and we graph y equals two sine x cosine x minus 1.2 cosine x, we can identify these solutions by determining where that function is equal to zero, which would be the x-intercepts of the function. So again, if we graph the right side of this equation as y equals the right side, which I've already done using desmos.com, which is a great graphing resource. Notice how here on the right, this is what I've entered in, y equals two sine x cosine x minus 1.2 cosine x. Let's go ahead and close this. To get a better view of this though, I'm gonna click on the wrench, click projector mode, and also I'll change the x-axis to radians by clicking here. Now if I close this, if I click on the graph, a lot of the key points are found automatically. Notice how the function value or the y coordinate is zero here when x is approximately 0 0.644 radians, which we found as the smallest positive solution. And then here's our next positive solution. Notice y is equal to zero at pi over two radians. Notice how this also emphasizes that our equation does have an infinite number of solutions because there's an infinite number of x-intercepts. But our question only asks us to find the two smallest positive solutions which graphically would be the two smallest positive x-intercepts. So the graph does verify our two smallest positive solutions are correct. I hope you found this helpful.